Even though it's spooky season and it's officially October 4th of 2025 and things have been a little slow to start out there across the Atlantic, we are still technically coming out of the peak of the hurricane season. And climatologically speaking, about 20 to 25 percent of our overall activity tends to happen during the month of October. And there's a couple things out there I want you all to be paying attention to if you could be so kind to do so. This is a look at one of my favorite graphics that we have, the tropical depression probabilities. It's a color-coded chart that helps us to identify where the ingredients are coming together to support the potential for a tropical depression or stronger to develop. And when I take you full screen and start to loop the graphic here, I want you to watch what happens. That's our area of interest highlighted by the National Hurricane Center, expected to come very close to the Lesser Antilles before curving back up towards Bermuda again. But then what's that? If you notice south of Jamaica, southeast of the Cayman Islands, there's a small little faded black circle there where the colors are suddenly perking up once again. And the reason I bring this up, even though we've got a little bit of time before this really becomes a thing, right about now is typically where we watch for something called the return of the Central American Gyre. The Gyre in of itself, very quick crash course over on ClickOrlando.com. I have another article that takes you on a bit more of a deep dive, but essentially what it is is a buildup of moisture and a disruption in the typical wind flow you see across southern Mexico, the Yucatan, and much of Central America. You typically have the opposite of what takes shape with the gyre. It's kind of like a stopping up or a clogging of the wind flow that results in a counterclockwise spin here. And as you can see where the red L's are circulating around that bubble of tropical moisture and lift, sometimes, if not most of the time, especially later into the hurricane season, they have a tendency of spitting out random tropical features that may go on to become hurricanes, if not major hurricanes. And something that's been jumping out at me for a little while now, we've got some pretty decent consistency over the last few days in our computer models. You take a look at the European model, for example, between the dates of the 12th and the 17th of October. That's when I'm pinpointing. Maybe take a note of that at home. Look at what the wind flow in the mid-levels of our environment does out there. That, folks, is a textbook in every sense of the word textbook, classic, traditional, however you want to describe it, that is your gyre setup. And it looks like, especially on the European model, we're trying to get something to try to shrink down and consolidate before further organizing into something over the Western Caribbean. We're gonna be watching this very closely. And the main reason why, I'll show you something called our velocity anomaly chart. Basically what this tells us Depending on the color coding, you know, we love colors. Colors make it very easy. Where the oranges and the reds are, we're sinking. Where the teals and the blues and the greens are, we're lifting, we're rising. Where you have the rising motions that typically supports thunderstorms, moisture, favorable conditions for tropical features to try to get going. And if you look between the dates of about October 9th, all the way towards the final countdown of Halloween, we're actually gonna be seeing a pretty strong, if not the strongest pulse from our MJO, the Madden-Julian Oscillation, than we've seen pretty much through the duration of the hurricane season. I'll tell you, I'm kind of impressed by this signature. This is one of the strongest signals that we've seen since we kicked things off back in June on the 1st and everywhere in between. This has definitely been trending a little more aggressive than not. And another thing I want to show you here real quick before we wrap up, let me see if I can pull it up for you. No, it doesn't look like it's saved over just yet. I have two shows pulled up. I'm getting ready to do the 11 o'clock. But I just want to tell you, the reason I bring this to your attention, not only do we see the potential for a tropical system to form in a landlocked area, but on top of that, we have been tracking the gyre for several years now. Some of the more notable storms that have come on to impact not only Florida but the Gulf Coast include the storms of last year, Francine. We're all very familiar with Helene. We're all very familiar with Milton. 2023, we had Idalia. And then back in 2018, we had Category 5 Hurricane Michael. The gyre is definitely a bit more of a synonymous 
kind of feature. It's an iconic feature for the back end and the front end of a hurricane season, and that's why I want us to start paying close attention to it. We still got a long ways away. As you saw, the dates are October 12th through the 17th, so you've got a lot of time to analyze and critique exactly what the environment does and begin to identify when it is that feature does try to take shape, because then I do think it's only a matter of time before something may try to spin up in the form of a tropical storm.